There always seems to be three elements to every Super Bowl. The game itself, the commercials, and the halftime show. The Super Bowl didn't really start having pop and rock musicians perform at the halftime show until 1991 when New Kids on the Block made an appearance. That soon paved the way for the acts we see today. Perhaps the most controversial Super Bowl halftime show occurred in 2004 with Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson's Nipplegate scandal. It was following the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show that the NFL thankfully took a break from pop acts, enlisting rock musicians including Paul McCartney in 2005 and the Rolling Stones in 2006. 2007 would see musician Prince perform at the halftime show, but Prince's performance could have went awry. From 2005 to 2010, the Super Bowl halftime shows featured some pretty great acts, including The Who, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, The Rolling Stones, Paul McCartney, and Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Perhaps it was a pivot by the NFL to recover from the fallout from the 2004 Super Bowl and attract more baby boomer friendly acts. Charles Coplin, the executive producer of the halftime show, would tell The Ringer, David Saltz, who was a producer who worked with the NFL and ABC, was hired to go out into the music community and ask around and sort of say, hey, we're building this franchise. I think after we did McCartney and the Stones, we had built up some credibility on the rock and roll side, overcoming the Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake theater. There were so many things about Prince that we liked between his catalog, the fact that he was a performer, the fact that he appeared to a diverse group. Saltz would approach Prince about doing the halftime show and would be invited to the musician's house for dinner. Prince had a clear idea of what things he liked from the past halftime shows and what he didn't, and made it his mission to put on the greatest performance in the Super Bowl's history. Saltz would recall how Prince, after dinner, took him and his counterparts to one part of the house where his band was standing and waiting, and they soon went into an impromptu performance for the producer, whose jaw hit the floor. It was following the dinner that Prince agreed to do the halftime show. It was throughout 2006 and early 2007 Prince was coming up with ideas for the set list. The plan was for Prince to do a medley of four original songs and four covers over a span of 12 minutes. Ruth Arzait, Prince's personal assistant, would tell The Ringer what followed. After David Sulce came by the house and Prince put on that half hour private show, he began to compile music. He asked me to retrieve a list of CDs every Tuesday when new music was released, but he added some Foo Fighters albums, Santana, Hendrix, and Nine Inch Nails. I think he was playing with the idea of mixing up some of those artists. I made a mention that I loved the Foos and I heard them doing Darling Nikki at a show once. He said the Foos are the only band that could do a collection of my rock songs justice. I replied, oh my gosh, that would be amazing. He then said, you wish. I responded with, I do, I do. He made a smirky face and dismissed me from the office. Charles Coplin, who was the head of the NFL's programming at the time, would tell The Ringer about his pre-Super Bowl meeting with Prince at the musician's room in the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, stating, We took the elevator up, walked down the hall, knocked on the door, and there he was. There was Prince. He was wearing a canary yellow suit and makeup, and he just didn't look human. And I don't mean that in a negative way. He looked like he was this kind of angel or this alien or something. He smiled at us and he invited us in and we were walking and he was gliding. And the reason why he was gliding is because he was wearing those kid sneakers with wheels on them. He was wheeling down the floor and the lights on his sneakers were lighting up in the back, the same color as his canary yellow suit. The NFL executives would be nervous over what exactly Prince was going to perform. Would he be playing his hits, they wondered? Prince would play the executives' covers that he had planned for the Super Bowl, including Queen's We Will Rock You, Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower, and CCR's Proud Mary, as well as Best of You by Foo Fighters. The performance would also include his own catalog of songs, including Let's Go Crazy, 1999, Baby I'm a Star, and the performance would end with Purple Rain. It's hard to believe now, but the Super Bowl, according to the ringer, had never been played in the rain, and as the day of the game inched closer, the weather looked unfavorable in Florida. Despite all the preparations ahead of the performance, the NFL hadn't really planned for rain. As the executives scrambled to make adjustments, they were worried about the electrocution risk with Prince's personal assistant telling the ringer, I knew that the executives were concerned about the rain and about electrocution. One of the NFL execs suggested lip syncing, but his assistant would recall Prince was like, I'm Prince, I'm going to play live. Meanwhile, Prince's musical director suggested that they should perhaps wear tennis shoes on stage so they don't slip, but Prince didn't want to change anything. Things would hit a snag and put the show in jeopardy when the crew started to roll out Prince's performance stage, which came in a number of pieces. It would turn out one of the wheels on the stage severed a cable. An executive producer Don Misher would recall to the ringer, there was a man in our lighting crew whose name was Tony Ward, and Tony realizing we were now counting down to going on the air, took his pliers and stripped the insulation off three cables. And he inserted them into a plug just raw and he held that for the entire 12 and a half minute duration in the rain to keep the lights and all that working. 
Prince's performance at the Super Bowl would be listed as one of the most memorable in history, and the musician was set to be happy with the halftime show. With Jose telling the ringer, you can tell he was very happy with the performance. I was like, you made history, and he was like, I always make history. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Ultra Stories. Take care.